Hi, Flosstube friends. How are you guys? Thank you for coming back and spending some time with me today. If you are new here, my name is Melanie, and this is my channel about cross-stitch and project bags that I've been sewing and knitting today, too. So I have, I've been crafting like a crazy person <laughs> and loving every minute of it. And so, um... I'm overdue on this update. I I had a lot going on, some of which I'll, I'll talk about here, um, but I've been crafting like crazy despite all that. So I'm gonna kind of split this video up into three, three sections today. So I'm gonna start with uh, my project bags, which I just have a couple to show. Um, me and Eugenie have been hard at work. And then I'll go into stitching, and then from there I will go into knitting. So if there's any part of that that you don't um, that you don't want to watch, you you kind of know the order. So let's talk about life. Let's talk about life. I hope you guys have been enjoying spring. Spring is here in Michigan. Um, it is a little chilly today. It's 59 degrees. I mean, not so chilly, um, but we've had beautiful weather, like 70s and 80s. It's been so nice. The flowers are coming up, all the birds. I see all the robins are bouncing around outside. So it's been a lot of fun. Um, yesterday, we celebrated my little niece Sophia's birthday. Uh, she turned four and we just had the best time celebrating with her. Um, she's such a sweet little girl. We love her so very much. Um, so uh, yeah, just a small group of us family, we got together and celebrated with her. Um, I had a big scare and this is, this is more like a public service announcement. <laughs> okay, so if you are a dog owner, I had an incident with my poor sweet little Maxie. I wanna say, two weeks ago. I was working away um, and my other dog and I were playing with the toy and Max got really excited, you know, and he got really frisky and he ran over to his dog bowl and he took a huge chomp of food. And I think what he did is then he started barking to come and play. I think he inhaled um, and a piece of food got lodged in his throat. And I could tell, like I got down on the floor with him, I could tell he was acting funny because he kept like making this, like this deep inhale wheezing sound. Um, and so I, I flipped him upside down and I was patting him on the back and I opened his mouth and I, I couldn't see anything. And I was like, I've got to get him to the vet. Now, my vet that I go to is about 45 minutes away from me. Um, so I knew there was no way, 45 minutes, right? So I grab my purse, I grab him, I jump in my truck, I drive down to Main Street, like I live um, I live in Royal Oak, and so Main Street's only about a mile and a half from me because I know that there's a vet there. I've never been to this vet before. By the time I got there, he was not looking good. He was really having trouble. Um, so I grabbed him, didn't even lock the doors to the truck, went running into the office, burst into the office, and I was like, I need to see a doctor now. My dog is choking. Um, and they rushed me into a room and this poor veterinarian, I, I still have to bring her flowers or go back there and say thank you. Um, I'm sure she was just starting her morning. It was like nine in the morning, maybe 8.30, nine in the morning. Uh, and here I come barreling in like a, a hot mess. Um, and she opened his mouth and she said, he's turning blue. And uh, I could see that his tongue was, was blue and I just, lost it, tears. Um, she went running with him in the back, like running into the back. And I just sat in that room for a good 10 minutes, just bawling my eyes out. Um, I didn't know if he was alive or not. Uh, they were great there. They were super nice. They, they offered me water and, and, you know, told me everything's going to be fine. About 10, 15 minutes later, she came back and she said that they had him on oxygen um, that he was fine, uh, but that the culprit was, and she handed me, and now you have to know, my dogs are small, so the pellet of food was like, I mean, it's not even the size of a pea. The, the, the food is so small. That single solitary pellet of food completely blocked his trachea. Um, I have no idea how such a freak thing could happen, but this amazing vet was able to get in there and clear his airway and then they had him on oxygen for a while and he is alive and well 
Thank the Lord. Um, but what a scare that was. You know, anything choking, uh, any, you know, humans, animals, that's always a very scary situation. But what the public service announcement is, and the reason why I've told you all this is, so I did some research when I got home to find out, you know, how does this happen? Um, we have a follow-up appointment with his normal vet to this Tuesday. Uh, and I'm just gonna have them do, you know, like an X-ray and make sure that there's there's nothing going on um, in there. He's been fine ever since. But it turns out you can do the Heimlich on your dog. Um, that is not something I even thought of in the moment. Like I, you know, I know the Heimlich for for humans, obviously, but in the moment with a dog and his anatomy, I didn't even think to try and do a Heimlich maneuver. So if you are a dog owner. You may just want to look that up uh, and familiarize yourself a little bit. It's not very different than what we do with humans. Um, but that was such a scary moment to have my poor sweet boy ch choking in front of me. Lost my mind. Lost my mind. But the good news is he's okay. And I now am prepared, if anything happens to you, I'm with my dogs. <laughs> so yeah, he gave us quite a scare. Um, and then the other thing I've been up to, so me and my sister, Melissa, who is No Day Stitcher on Instagram, um, we had our sister stitchy weekend and it was such a great time. She came on Friday and um, this was like two weeks ago as well. She came on Friday and she brought her stuff and we literally stitched from morning till night uh, went to bed, woke up, and started the process again. It was so much fun. Our goal was just do as much stitching as we can in a weekend. You know, not do anything else. No cleaning, no chores, no anything else. Just stitch, stitch, stitch. So I have updates to show you from that. And I did post some of it on Instagram. Um, and then other than that, I've been, work has been busy, but I've been planning um, my garden. I'm gonna, not a vegetable garden, but I'm gonna be planting a bunch of perennials around my house and I need to start the seeds indoors. So I've never done that before. So we're gonna be diving into that. But let's get to what you're here for. Let's get to the crafts. Let's get to this, the bags. I'll start with the project bags first. Okay, so I've shared these on Instagram as well. And I'm gonna show you the three that I recently made and kind of the progression of them. So the first one that you saw was this bunny bag. How do you not just love these bunnies? You guys all know me and bunnies, but I, this fabric with this pink polka dot, I just absolutely loved this combination. And I am really enjoying doing my zipper pulls with these enamel, um, let's see if I can get close and it won't wash it out. Um, no, that really washes it out. There's a better picture of it on my Instagram, but it's this sweet little enamel bunny. And um, yeah, the inside, I did the coordinating um, main fabric on the flap on the inside. I like just two fabrics, um, you know, just to keep it simpler. And this is just so much fun. And this is that tutorial from Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch um, that I've been making all my bags with. And I just love that one, love that one so much. Okay. And then the next one that I made, I decided to branch out a little bit. Um, my friend Leanne from Small Town Stitches, hi Leanne. She uh, sent me a tutorial from the Primitive Stitcher, and that was a great tutorial as well. And um, I changed up her, so she gives you this, you know, all the dimensions you need. She goes through it with the sewing machine, so if you're not super familiar with your sewing machine or if that's new for you, she really tries to get the camera close so that you can see, and that was really helpful, especially the zipper pull part. Um, so check that out, but she does, um, she does the accent fabric like above and below the zipper and I really liked the look of that. I really like the look of that. So I modified the dimensions um, because I like my bags to be a little bit longer than they are tall, I, you know, not like a square, but more like a, like a rectangle. And so I made this bag, um, the finished size is 12 by 14. And I, <laughs> again, it's bunny fabric. Look how cute they are. Oh my gosh, bunny buns, so cute. I love it. I'm obsessed with all the rabbits. I think the Joanne people think I'm crazy, which, yeah, pretty much for bunnies because, um, yeah, I'm just constantly stocking out all their bunny fabric. Um, so this one, I did the, the accent fabric above and below the zipper. And I also did uh, some top stitching above and below the zipper and here as well. 
um, just playing around with the machine, which I really like. And then I had purchased 20 of these enamel bunny pins. Um, so I put another bunny charm on. And then the inside has the little coordinating bunnies. I mean, adorable. It's so much fun. The amount of fabric I'm purchasing. Whew, yeah, but I love it. I do love it. Okay, and then this is kind of my third generation that I was just working on um, last night, and then I finished this zipper pull this morning. This was also a fabric from Joanne. Isn't that so pretty? Look at those red trucks. And I, I think that's a little golden retriever in there. I had a little golden retriever named Cubby growing up, and it reminds me of him with the tree farm. I thought this was so cute. And then I used this red polka dot, uh, white red with white polka dot accent fabric. And then um, the same for the inside. So the inside has more red trucks with the puppy. Um, same size for this one, 12 by 14, which I really, really like. And the zipper pull, I did something a little different. So I sewed this in a different way. And then I added a few little coordinating beads to this um, Christmas tree charm, which I just thought was so sweet. So this is my latest and greatest, and I am having so much fun, you guys. I'm having so much fun. I keep um, bestowing bags upon my family members, <laughs> whether they want them or not, because um, it's just great practice for me, and I feel like every time I sew one, um, you're just, you know, just like with anything, you're perfecting your technique a little bit. You see things you like better. You get more confident. You try different things. So yeah, I have probably two metric tons of fabric in my other room. Um, so I'm going to oil up Eugenie and we're going to just keep going. <laughs> so that is my project bag endeavors. And I've just been having a blast with that. I've been having so much fun. Okay. So let's get into stitching. So for Sister Stitchy Weekend, like I said, we decided that we were just going to stitch as much as we could in the entire weekend. And so I'm, I'm such a dork and I'm completely okay with it. But I made us little papers and the little paper said, what is your plan for Sister Stitchy Weekend? <laughs> Um, you know, with, here's our projects we're going to work on. And I started with good intentions, like putting in the times and I was going to log how much time I worked on each one that kind of fell by the wayside because we were just laughing and having fun and stitching and we watched a ton of floss tube and it was just great. So I made one for me and I made one also for my sister, poor thing, made her fill it out. <laughs> with her plan. Um, yeah, she's like, thanks to my engineering sister. Um, so we had so much fun and I just saved these because we're going to do more sister stitchy weekends, obviously many, many more in our lifetime. And I just thought it would be fun to save those over the years and we can see what we worked on and, and the fun things that we did. So let's go through all the things I did on sister stitchy weekend, because that was just a ton of stitching for me. I had to finish Woo and I've already filled that square on the planner, which I'll talk about. <laughs> We had 35, I finished one to 34, and then I filled it right back up. Yeah, that's how I rolled. Okay, so my finish, this was one of my very oldest whips. I think I started this in, I think I started this in, well, I know I started it actually the end of 2017 because me and my two sisters went to Florida in March of 2018 and me and my stitchy sister Melissa were working on this together on that vacation. So this is Spring by Lizzie Kate. We just, we love this. We decided, Melissa is actually the one who inspired me like, let's get this done. I mean, we've been working on it for so long. We're so close, let's get this done. It'll be our one this weekend that we can say as a finish. Boy, did we underestimate the amount of stitching. You know, you see the, we saw what we had done and we're like, oh yeah, just a few flowers and a couple trees and we'll be done in like two hours. Like eight hours later, <laughs> we finished, but we did finish. So we have these coordinating, matching uh, finishes from our Sister Stitchy Weekend and we just had a blast. We had so much fun. That purple house is just, so beautiful. I think that's, I'm pretty sure that's Lilac by Weeks Dye Works. Um, and then we made some changes too because Melissa, Melissa noticed this chimney up here is charted to be orange, just like the feet. 
And I didn't think anything of it. And she was like, are those, are those just like really big feet? And I was like, no, it's a bird standing on a chimney. And I didn't realize until I went to stitch it that it, it did kind of look, at least for us, like this bird with a giant talons at the bottom so we changed it out um to the to match the roof color or to match the door color um and we liked that a little bit better but it was a very cool piece for us too because we could really see the progression as a stitcher just like i said with the bags you know every time you do something the more you do it you find different techniques you find a certain way that works better for you and i could see very clearly in this grass uh, my old way of stitching and how my stitches just did not lay as flat. It didn't look as uniform compared to how I finished up. So that's kind of a cool thing to be able to look back at this piece and just see, you know, beginning to end how I've progressed as a stitcher. So that was a lot of fun. This is stitched on 28, if you're interested, 28 T dye Monaco. And I just, I love this piece. So I need to do some finishing on that. Okay, so now let's talk about all the other things I've been working on and stitching. Um, one of these that I'm gonna show you, we did not start on Sister Stitchy Weekend, but within the first 10 minutes of Sister Stitchy Weekend, we had bought it. <laughs> this is the fault of, um, oh, I can't remember her name, but her channel is Stitching, Stitching with the Waves. And she showed this beautiful advent, and I will insert a picture here. And it is called Calendario del Evento. That's my best attempt at that. But um, she showed this and we immediately went to Etsy. I mean, this was in the first 10 minutes. We sit down to stitch, we have our drinks. We're like, okay, let's watch Floss do. And within the first 10 minutes, we're like, get on Etsy, we need to buy that. Um, so we're gonna do this together as a stitch along. And this one that I just mentioned that came out of my planner square for the 35, got replaced right here with the advent calendar. So we are going to stitch this together. It is such a beautiful piece as you just saw. Um, so it's an advent, but what's really neat is there's 24 squares and then the 25th slot is the entire bottom and it's Santa in his sleigh with Rudolph. Had to have it. We were, we were like crazy ladies. We immediately went and got the patterns. We immediately went and purchased the fabric. So it all came in within the past couple of weeks. And um, what we decided we're gonna do is stitch the border first. Our plan was if we can get the entire border stitched, then we could do like a Christmas in July sister weekend and just go, go to town. And for the entire weekend, just focus on that piece and get as much done as we can. Cause we'd like to finish it by Christmas, but these squares, you know, looking at these squares again, it's like it's like a thousand stitches per per square for the motif. You know, it's like 10 squares of 10, 10 by 10. So it's like a thousand stitches per. So it's not a small amount, but you know, if you spread it out through the year and we figured if we get a huge jump on it, then we can just keep going. So that's our plan. Let me show you where I am at. We got the called for fabric, which was 28, um, not, sorry, not 28 count, 32 count natural um, raw linen, which isn't that just beautiful? This is my first time stitching on a natural raw linen and I will be using it again. It is just such a pretty, pretty color. And these Christmas red and white just pops on it so much. Oh, I love it so much. So we're gonna stitch all of the squares um, and we're gonna do each square one at a time and connect them all to make sure we're aligned. Um, and then we're gonna start filling them in. So this is just very, very cool that I get to do the stitch along with my sister. Um, it's all DMC floss, which is incredible because the, the colors are just so beautiful and the pattern's so beautiful. So this is where we're at with that start. And um, yeah, so we're gonna be working on that. and. We're really excited, really excited. Okay, this next one is one I worked on on Sister Stitchy Weekend. And this is one I started for Leanne at Small Town Stitches. 
her birthday sale. She had stitch what you want on your birth on her birthday. Just just work on something that you want. And I chose to start Heart in Hands Bluebird Sampler. And I just love this piece. I saw this piece on Cindy DeRosa's um, Instagram and her floss tube, Cindy Stitches, Cindy's Cross Stitch, Cindy's Cross Stitch. Um, and I just, I loved how she did it. It's just so beautiful. So I decided to start this. I did not use the called for linen or floss. I decided to stitch this on a um, antique white. I really just wanted this blue to pop. Um, and look really, really clean with the blue. I, I don't know, something in my mind was like the crispness of that. And I chose by Gentle Art Presidential Blue. And here's where I'm at. So I'm really loving that blue color on this white fabric. Um, I'm gonna fin finish this in a pillow, just like it shows here. That's how Cindy did it too. And it just looks so pretty like that. So I'm just gonna have, you know, maybe like a blueberry color, blueberry and white colored fabric here with a nice big blue ribbon. I think that'll look so sweet for summer. Um, and it's just such a fun stitch. You know, anytime you're doing things monochromatically, you don't have to think about changing colors. It is just a, a much more um, smooth going stitching because you can just focus on making your X's and not worrying about, you know, the colors or the pattern or anything like that. So. I'm really enjoying this one. I'm really having fun with it. Okay, so next is oh, one of my favorites. You guys know this. I don't even have to tell you this. This is Pink Sparrow Sampler. It's an antique reproduction. I've talked about this um, in my previous floss tubes as well. The uh, original artist, the original young woman who created this, they do not know. It's um, They don't know her name. They estimated the time frame, I think, to be like the mid to, I think they said the mid 1800s. I think, I think that's when it, it was, the mid 1800s. Um, so every time I look at this, I just think that's so fascinating um, that some little girl created this. It's so beautiful. The colors in this are so beautiful in the reproduction. I love it so much. So I am stitching this on the called for Weeks Dye Works fabric. Um, it is 32 count parchment. And here is where I'm at. So I got some work in on this on Sister Stitchy Weekend. I'm actually into this bird now. I think I came across here and did some more vines. I did this portion here, uh, a flower down here and a flower up here, I believe. So yeah, I'm just loving this so much. It's such a beautiful, beautiful sampler. Um, it's my first reproduction sampler, so I'm super excited about it. Um, I did make one color change, and that's just the the, um, the leaves here and in the vines. It called for, I think it was corn husk, which was real yellow for me. So I changed it to baby spinach by Gentle Arts, and I'm just enjoying it so much. Aren't those pastel colors just so springy? Oh, I love it. Love, love, love it. So I'm having a ton of fun with that one. Okay, next, this is a beautiful pattern. I was enabled uh, to stitch this pattern by Lori from Mischievous Stitches. If you haven't checked out her channel, go check her out. She's such a sweetie. In fact, she just posted a picture on Instagram today that she was at the Masters. Oh, I'm a huge golfer, Lori, so I love that you were there. That is so, what a life-changing experience, how cool. Um, okay, so this is, I've joined her, and I always forget the other woman's name. I have to look that up, but they are in a stitch along for my, In My Father's House, and this is By the Bay Needle Arts. It is such a beautiful pattern. I love the saying, it says, there are many rooms in my father's house. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And there are two excerpts from the Bible. Um, just so beautiful. I, she showed this and I immediately again was like, one, two, three stitch, here we go. <laughs> Click, here's my credit card. Yeah, I had to have it. I had to have it. So I have really been enjoying this a lot. So I am stitching this on the called for fabric, 32 count sandstone linen, which is a really pretty color. It's just like a, it does remind you of sand, like on a beach. It's just really a beautiful color. Um, but I did decide to change up colors. Um, this pattern is gorgeous as it is. It, it really is just beautiful as it is. But I wanted a little more vibrant green in the trees. Um, here up in Michigan, our trees get real, real green. 
so I wanted you know more green and 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 not so much of the muted um, colors. And then this color of the house, which Lori is doing it in the called for color, and it's it's just beautiful. Um, but I'm just a sucker for a pink house. Oh, I'm a sucker for a pink house. So I'm going to be doing my uh, house in Jakey Brown. Oh, let me take that up. Jakey Brown by Classic Color Works, which is this color, which is just so pretty. I love that pink so much. It's one of my very favorite colors of flosses. So I'm going to make it a pink house just because I love the samplers with the pink houses. I love it. So um, I haven't gotten to the house yet, but here is where I'm at so far. So I'm really having fun with this. The trees are really fun to stitch. This one was just so unique looking. Um, and I changed my colors up. So I think this is, I think this is classic Colorworks Grasshopper. Uh, this is Baby Spinach and this is Weeks Dye Works Bayberry. Um, so I just, I really love it so much. It's so much fun to work on. And it's just, it's a lot bigger piece than I realized. Um, you know, when I was looking at it on the pattern, it didn't look as large, but I mean this, this piece of fabric, which is gonna take up the majority of it is good size. But I'm just having, I'm having so much fun with that stitch along. It's just, it's been a real pleasure working on this. It's just such a beautiful pattern. It's such a beautiful saying, I love it. So can't wait to get back to that. Okay, next. I am woefully, woefully behind, and it's because <laughs> I love squirrels, and I'm constantly squirreling. I'm squirreling for fabric, I'm squirreling for, for yarn, I'm squirreling for this pattern, I'm squirreling for that pattern, you know, I just, my head is constantly spinning with crafts, which is okay. But I am woefully behind on the Modern Folk Embroidery 2021 sale. Um, and I love this piece. I really do. It's not for lack of love. It never is. Um, so as of right now, uh, those who are staying on track are over here in April. So this is a uh, one release per month at the beginning of the month. Um, you get a square. So it's 12, 12 total squares so that you can finish by the end of the year. These are very dense in stitching. Um, like 4,000 to 5,000 stitches per section. Um, and like I said, I'm enjoying it so much, but I just, I squirreled, I really squirreled. Um, so here is where I'm at. I am trying to finish up February. So I stitched this on 32 count um, light sand Belfast, which is such a beautiful color. I love this color so much. I am using 3031 for the chocolate brown and the other one? Oh, I can't remember my other color. I'll have to, I'll have to put it down below. I can't remember my other color off the top of my head. Um, but it's a desert sand. It's such a pretty color. I love these two together. I love them on this fabric. Um, yeah, so all I have left in February, I have to finish up this intersection here, this, these same motifs over here. Uh, I'm almost done with these birds here. There's like a few berries that are hanging a few more leaves over here and I'm done with February and I can move on to March, which is this beautiful flower uh, in a vase. So I have this on my April focus to really spend some time on this one and try to get caught up um, because I do love it and it's so beautiful. So, so beautiful. Okay, last of the whips. This one I was enabled by Stephanie from Pam and Steph at Just Keep Stitching. Um, she showed this finished piece. She had gotten it back. Um, I think she had it finished at Keepsakes, I think. And she had it finished as like a standing pillow. It got me, uh, it's a bunny. How am I not gonna stitch it if it's a bunny? I have to stitch it. So this is Teresa Kogut, um, Curious Bunny. Can you even, he's so new. I love him. I love that he's just, mm, he's so sweet and simple and he's staring up at those little, I think they're, yeah, they're berries. Oh my gosh. So again, I immediately hit pause on floss soup and had to go and purchase this because I had to have it. So I am stitching mine on 32 count ivory linen. 
Um, and I'm using all the called for threads. So during Sister Stitchy Weekend, I worked on the bunny outline. I got it and I started filling it a little bit here, um, which was really fun. <laughs> It was really fun to see him take shape. Um, I'm really looking forward to filling in, right? Because he's all one color and it's DMC, so you can just go and go and go and go. Um, oh, this needle minder. I found a new shop on Etsy, which was just great. It's called... <laughs> Isn't that cute, that chubby bunny? Um, caffeinated cat... It's caffeinated cat crafts, I believe. Um, and I will say her needle miners are super strong. Like she is using a super powerful magnet, which I really appreciate. Um, Cause it just, it stays put. It holds my pattern. It holds my needle, holds all the things. Um, so that is where I'm at on Curious Bunny. And I'm just loving him. He's so much fun. Those little ears. Ah, okay. So April plans. Let's talk April plans and then I'm gonna show you haul. Cause I have haul. So April plans, I'm going to work on the Modern Folk Embroidery Cell, like I talked about. I'd like to get some progress on that. I am going to bring out Prey by Teresa Koga, and that's the one I'm doing for my grandmother. It said Angel. Uh, I really want to push for a finish on that one. Curious Bunny that I just showed. Uh, my father's house, I want to continue on that. Pink Sparrow Sampler, and I am going to be working on all the border for the advent calendar because I really want to get started on the motifs. So those are my April plans for cross-stitching. Uh, let me show you haul. Let me show you haul. So again, Sister Weekend Enabling. Um, I saw this one. I actually purchased this one before Sister Weekend, and a lot of people are stitching it. Um, so beautiful. I know you've seen it from market or not from market, but from the, um, the expo that they had Satsuma street oology. I just, those eggs are so gorgeous. The color of the color of those guys. I just, oh, those are going to go on my Easter tree. That is the plan for those. They're so beautiful. So I picked up that pattern. I also picked up, um, and I got that from Abby as hop Knot stitcher. And I also picked this one up from Abby, Rose Cottage Sampler Pin Key by Stacy Stacy Nash. Isn't that just darling? I love a red house. Red and pink houses, I think. That's my neighborhood, red and pink houses. I love that one so much. I love the colors, I love the fabric, everything. Mm, wanna do it. Have no room on my list. <laughs> Gonna have to be patient. <laughs> so I have not started this because I am not allowed. Um, and then next is, oh, this was so pretty. What got me about this one, this was on somebody's floss tube. I can't remember who. We watched so much floss tube that weekend. What got me about this one was the saying. So it says, no glory I covet, no riches I want. Ambition is nothing to me. The one thing I beg of good heaven to grant is a mind independent and free. And that's from a poem, I believe. Um, I don't know who wrote the poem, but I just love that she used that in her piece because isn't that the truth? I think that's so gorgeous. So this will be my second reproduction sampler. I have Mary Bars in my um, stash. That was going to be my first one. And uh, Nicole from Nicole's Needlework just finished it. It is a monster. It's huge. Um, so I figured I'll start with these smaller ones first. <laughs> before diving into that, but this is Sarah Elizabeth Brooke, 1842. I love the little dogs. I love the birds. Oh, I love it all. But I can't start it yet. See, this whole happy planner thing is raining me in, which I need because, yeah, I want to stitch all the things. And the next one we got, uh, I'm going to show you a picture on screen because it's such a beautiful pattern. Um, we saw this, um, we saw this on Christy, uh, crosshatch quilts. We saw this on her, uh, floss tube. We had gone back to like the beginning to watch, I think it is her very first video. She pulled this out and we were like, oh, where is our purse? Where is our wallet? It is such a beautiful piece. It is by Plum Street Samplers, Liberty's Welcome. And I'll insert a picture here. So we, um, 
we both wanted to stitch it immediately. Um, so we went right away, started ordering the stuff, making plans to stitch it. As of right now on my 35 squares, they are all filled up. They are all filled up with the advent calendar. So before I start Liberty's Welcome, which I would like to be my next start so I can stitch it with my sister, um, I must finish something. So I really want to focus on Pray by Teresa Kogut because I want to get that done for my grandma. I want to get that framed. And then that would free up some space for Liberty's Welcome. But Liberty's Welcome is going to be a very long running project. It's really big. Um, but something about it, I mean, oh, just that house, that giant house and the horse and the July 4th on there. Oh, we love it so much. So that is another one that me and my sister, Melissa, are going to do as a stitch along. Now, speaking of Melissa, before I move on, um, so she is, we're sisters. <laughs> she is the monogamous stitcher and I am the squirrel stitcher. That is how we roll. It, it's hilarious. Um, she gets her mind on one thing and she wants to finish it and she's just like into it until she finishes it. Me, I'm like, look, oh, oh, oh. yeah, so it's good. We balance each other out. <laughs> Um, but she has been working on, I started uh, this project quite a while ago. It's the Always Flowers Sampler. Um, and it's by Stitching Through the Years. You can find it on Etsy. She also started it. She purchased the pattern. She saw mine. She loved it. She got her fabric and she finished it. And it is absolutely gorgeous. So much work went into this. Um, I've watched her over the months stitching it. Uh, and she made some color conversions, which I love. She changed the color of the house in the center and she changed the color of the white flowers on the border to Jakey Brown, which I love Jakey Brown. Um, so I will insert a picture of her finish here. So I'm so proud of you, sister. It's so beautiful. Um, we're going to get it framed. Her husband and her father-in-law are actually into woodworking. And so they're thinking about trying to make frames for us, which I think is fantastic. We would have our own little frame shop going. That would be wonderful. So let's move on to knitting. So on top of all the other projects I've got, the knitting bug came back. No idea why. And I just wanted to knit all the socks, socks for everybody. Everybody. So... The first one that got me, um, this is by Knit Picks, and this is their Hawthorne Fingering Weight Yarn. Um, and the name of this one is Cathedral Park. And here is the cake. Isn't that, can you even, isn't that beautiful? That blue and those browns. Oh my gosh, this one really got me. And I um, immediately cast it on. Uh, to make some socks. And so I am using, here's my sock so far, and this is just a vanilla sock pattern, but isn't that blue stripe so cool? Oh, I love it so much. So um, this vanilla sock pattern is by Summer Lee, uh, Summer Lee Sock Company, or Summer Lee Designs. She also has a floss tube, not a floss tube, but a, um, a YouTube channel. And she designed socks and sock patterns. And this is one that she released for free. And it's just a basic vanilla sock. Um, I changed her pattern a little. I like a two by two ribbing in my cuff because I like a real stretchy kind of resilient um, ribbing. So I did a two by two ribbing. And this is on just Knit Picks, um, their bear yarn with no, you know, with no dye at all. So I got a skein of that. And then here's where I'm at. I'm still working down the leg on this sock. I'm also gonna do the toe and the heel in this natural color. I just, I think it's such a pretty, pretty color. But um, yeah, so I cast those on probably about a week and a half, maybe two weeks ago. And I've just been knitting in all my free time. <laughs> maybe if I could just grow more arms, maybe that's what I need to shoot for. <laughs> Or quit my job. I mean, who really wants to do engineering anyway, right? <laughs> anyway. Uh, and so, yeah, so these just sit in my little yarn bowl. I got this on Etsy a while ago. Um, if you're interested in who I got this from, I can I can let you know. Just let me know. 
Um, and I just knit on that whenever the mood strikes. And so I got back into socks and then I just went on Etsy and I typed in sock yarn and oh my goodness, I found the sweetest uh, woman. Her name is Kimberly and her company is called the Palmer Yarn Company. And I had never heard of her before. I, it just popped up when I typed it in on Etsy and it led me down a rabbit hole. And she does beautiful, beautiful dyeing. Um, and she sells something called a sock box. So let me show you this. And I tell you, presentation is, Kimberly, if you watch this, presentation is amazing because you know, when you get happy mail, you're so excited, but it came and it has this Palmer Yarn Company sticker on it, which was just super cute. And when you open it up, it's a little thank you note from her, all wrapped so beautifully. And then when you open this up, how gorgeous is this? My jaw dropped. This is her little sock box. Um, let me try to do this so it doesn't blow it out. Mm, this light, this ring light sometimes gets too bright. So that's her little sock box. Now you can make a choice for just the, um, the sock yarn, or you can also include the candle and the little tray and the little needle minder, or not the needle minder, but the, um, progress keeper. So I just chose to start with just the, um, the sock set. So you get a 20 gram skein of, look at this, isn't this pretty? This is oatmeal and winter berry and it's a 80-20 merino. This is her March sock box. I, I just think that is so beautiful, those colors together. Oh my gosh. So it's just paired so beautifully and she wraps it up like in this beautiful label for you. And inside is just like, look at the, the packaging with these, these little, these little squishy things. What do you call these? What, it's not Easter grass. What would you call that? I don't know, little squishy things. And she gives you her little card with, she gave me tea. There's two different kinds of tea and candies in there. Awesome job, Kimberly. What what a delight that was to open that up. Um, it just shows that you really care about your customers and that you're just really proud to present your product in such a beautiful way. I was obsessed with this, obsessed. <sighs> so I've got to finish these other socks so I can start this. This is oatmeal and winter berry. So of course, I went back to her shop. Let's see what else she had. <laughs> And I ordered um, a sock set, so not the sock box this time, but another sock set. And this is, um, it's called Lilacs. Again, it is an 80-20 um, merino nylon blend. <sighs> Can you even with that, I wanna make a full body suit. <laughs> You know, like Ralphie in uh, the Christmas story with the bunny. <laughs> I'm just gonna walk out of the house for all my neighbors' delight in this one-piece jumper, head to toe, <laughs> purple. I would be okay with it. I mean, I don't think they'd be okay with it, but I'm totally okay. <laughs> it's just so pretty. So, Kimberly, your yarns are gorgeous. Keep doing what you're doing. I will be back definitely to purchase from you. Um, hand dyed with love. I just wow all the socks, and a bodysuit. I'm gonna need like 20 more of these for that. <laughs> okay, enough about that. Um, so let's talk Stitchy Kindness. Um, I have several cards, and a few of these cards I had from before, and I just forgot to say thank you and show them. Uh, this is from Melinda, one of my gift away winners. And this is from the Humane Society, uh, their Wildlife, Wildlife Land Trust. I just love this card so much. Thank you so much, Melinda. You did not have to do that. So beautiful. I got an Easter card from Nicole Buckeye Stitcher. Thank you so much, Nicole. You're always so sweet with your cards. And she says inside, of course, you had to have the bunny. <laughs> so she was right. I had to have the bunny. He's so cute. And then Daylene, if you haven't watched her floss tube, she is so grateful here on floss tube. And she's not only uh, an incredibly kind, sweet, wonderful human being, she's a fantastic cook. 
Uh, we are Facebook friends and she's always cooking magnificent things for her husband, uh, but she's also a quilter. That is a quilt she made. Is that not absolutely stunning? I can't even imagine all the work that must go into that. Just making my, my little project bags. I can't even imagine how much work goes into that. So thank you so much for thanking me, Daylene. It's so beautiful. And then last but not least, this was a thank you card from Amy Loves Toads. Hi, Amy. Thank you so much for this. It's just the sweetest thank you card. She wrote the most the most kind, sweet words on the inside along with a bunch of cute stickers. So I have all of these sitting up on my counter. Thank you so much. That means so much to me. Okay, let's talk shout outs. I have a few shout outs and then we'll do um, our I am everything happy card. So the shout outs, um, two people I've already shouted out before, but they're doing new things. And so I wanted to let you know in case you haven't heard. Uh, Leanne from Small Town Stitches, she just bought a boatload of yarn, a boatload, and it's gorgeous. And in her last floss tube video, she goes through all the different um, cakes of yarn that she got and they're just gorgeous and she's gonna make cowls. So I already have my cowl on order. I told her she should sell these because if you haven't seen on her Instagram, she had a picture of her with her cowl on and it's just gorgeous. So I have already ordered a cowl in the colorway Joy, which I'm super excited about. Um, so go check out her channel. And then Tiffany from Tiffin Stitches, she just posted a knitting podcast, um, I think like two days ago. I think it was two days ago. And she has just started challenging herself in all kinds of different ways. She's knitting a beautiful blanket. Um, and she goes through, like, it's one of those monthly subscriptions. I think it's from Annie's, Annie's Stitch Club. Uh, she's doing it with her mom, and there's all kinds of different stitches in that. And then she has been doing test knitting, which I think is so cool. You know, getting a pattern and, and knitting it up for the first time and, and giving feedback and getting it done on time. Like, I think that's really awesome that you're doing that, Tiffany. So go check out her knitting podcast. And then final person I want to mention is Betsy Klager. Hi, Betsy. She, oh my gosh, if you're not watching Betsy, you have to go stop by. Betsy, you make me laugh every single floss tube you do. I can't, it is impossible to watch Betsy's floss tube and not have a huge smile and, and laugh because she's just got a great personality. She is a ton of fun. She's just one of those people. She is who she is and she just She's just awesome. I wish you were my neighbor. Maybe I could be your neighbor. <laughs> and she has a cat named Hamilton. Um, and she always uh, shows her she's so sweet. She's a little tuxedo cat. So go check out Betsy. She's fantastic. She is fantastic. Okay, wow, this floss tube is long. I'm so sorry. You know, I have to stay on the two week schedule. The whole dog thing got me off this time. Okay, so let's see. Number, we are on number five. Let's see what it says. This week's number five, I am bold. All right, so I am bold. It says, I speak my truth in a loving way. My courage to communicate my needs is powered by my love for myself and my love for others. I am bold. I like that. Too many times things in life go unsaid um, I've been guilty of that in my life too. And it takes a tremendous amount of courage to say what you feel to those you love, to say how you feel in certain situations in a loving, positive way, you know? Um, and I think that's, that's true for all of us. And I think this is a very good, good reminder that you can speak your truth and be true to yourself and say the things you need to say. Uh, so that when you lay your head on the pillow every night, you know you haven't left anything unspoken. I think that's a good one. That's a really, really good one. So with that, I am going to leave you and go start doing my 900 crafts. <laughs> Make some dinner and then go start doing my 900 crafts. So I will be back in two weeks um, to show you where I'm at with all of these things and see how you guys are doing. Uh, maybe I'll show you my seeds that I'm starting and the flowers that I'm, I'm going to be planting. I'm super excited. You know, I have, I'm not a huge gardener, um, but I have these beautiful flower beds around my house, you know, like the, the built-in stone boxes. And I've always just put annuals in them. Um, and I've always 
said, I'd like to really get started with a perennial garden and then they come back year after year. Last year I planted zinnias and holy cow, those things were like six feet tall. They were awesome. I loved them. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be doing those again too. But until the next time I see you, uh, stay safe, smile. Better days are ahead. The sun is shining. Spring and summer are on their way. And um, I'll talk to you later. Bye.